H4, H4 hamburger. Welcome to another edition of Easy English. So I did a video on the International Pilots Alphabet, the ICAO Alphabet, and that is an alphabet that helps you to be understood by spelling out a word if you haven't yet perfected your British pronunciation. It's a very useful thing. But how do we remember the pilot's alphabet? Um, very often I'm, I'm on the phone and I might say, oh, H4, um, and I, can't, I don't know the alphabet. It's difficult to rem perhaps to remember all of it. So now today I'm going, I might say, oh, H4 hamburger or Hilton, so yeah. Hotel, H for hotel. Now I'm going to show you a technique, a memory technique that will help you remember the 26 um, objects or person or things that are associated with the pilot's alphabet. Now the pilot's alphabet, um, but the first four letters of that are obviously A, B, C, D. This is the technique. I want you to imagine maybe close your eyes and imagine that you're in your own home and uh, we're going to have each room you're going to go from one room to the other but imagine there are some objects or person placed around each room what I suggest you do is for the five vowels a e i o and u have one room for the first letter of the vowel and for each of the letters following it. For example, imagine coming in your front door of your home and there imagine the first letter of the alphabet A for alpha. The trick is to actually use a real life object or person to associate with the sound. So for B for Bravo, can you imagine a very brave person that you know? Can you, can you picture their face? Um, if you can, imagine them then being in your house when you, you open the door and they've got a letter A on them for alpha. Also, you could imagine somebody else uh, for the letter uh, for Charlie, somebody famous. You can imagine in that first room that you open the door. So. The technique is to associate a person, place or thing with the actual word that is in the pilot's alphabet. So at the beginning we have um, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. And whatever works for you when, you, when you hear that word Alpha, is there an actual object or a place or a person that you could associate with that? And you, you should imagine, maybe close your eyes and imagine that they, when you open your front door, there they are in that, that uh, hallway there. Um, uh, the, the, or the symbol or, or object that you associate with alpha. Now, for example, B is for bravo and bravo means brave. So if you, you could imagine an animal like a bull, a bull is thought to be a very brave animal. Uh, it will charge at um, their opponent. Perhaps you're imagining a bull in, in your, in your uh, hallway when you open the door with, a, with an, um, an alpha sign or an A sign on it. And um, as I said, C could be associated with Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin, a very iconic figure that is very well known who was a film actor and director in the very early uh, movies that were made. So if you imagine, if you imagine um, uh, a ball charging at Charlie Chaplin and then maybe uh, Delta, when I think of Delta, I think of Delta Airlines, of an aircraft. So perhaps you can imagine they're holding um, Charlie Chaplin is holding a model of a Delta Airlines uh, aeroplane. 
So then you have the important thing is that you try and use all of your senses to conjure up a really, a very real, vivid image. You know, perhaps you can uh, smell the, um, the, the fuel from the, air, the Delta airline. Um, perhaps you can feel the breeze of the wind as it's going past you. And this is all happening in your hall. Now, bear with me, it sounds a bit crazy, but this technique is used by the, the people that are the best in the world for memorizing things. Uh, for example, there was a guy who could remember the order of a pack of playing cards or several packs of playing cards and got the record for the Guinness Book of Records. Is his name Declan? And he uses this technique of placing um, uh, in your imagination uh, persons, places or things in a uh, uh, an area that you're very familiar with and you're, we're using your home. So, so, so how have we got so far? So you open the front door, uh, there's a ball with an alpha sign on it facing Charlie Chaplin who's, oh, who is holding a Delta Airlines aeroplane. So it's A for Alpha, B for Bravo, not Bull, um, C for Charlie, D for Delta, you're remembering that. And unlike remembering things in a sequence like A, B, C, D, E or A, E, I, O, U, you can go backwards, you know, you can very easily uh, run that backwards and say uh, D for Delta, C for Charlie, B for Bravo, A for Alpha. So it's a, non, it's a non-sequential memory technique as well. So then we go on to the next room in the house. And as we said, we're using the vowels for the place mark at the beginning. So we're going to begin with E for echo. That's going to be on the stairs. But you can use your own objects that help you remember the most. Now we're going to try to remember the next section uh, from the vowel E. E, F, G, H. The more vivid and surreal and interconnected the places, objects, things that are animals or people that you visualize, a kind of maybe, maybe you could have a kind of a, a little play going on or something. But the next room for me is the stairs, and we're going, I'm going to try and remember E, F, G, H. E is for echo, and an echo is a sound bouncing off something. And so I'm going to maybe use an image of what could it bounce off. Maybe it could be bouncing off a hotel, um, just like sound would bounce off of a cliff. And then we've got F for foxtrot, so I'm imagining a fox, and G is for golf. So what if I imagined, <laughs> something a bit crazy, a fox playing golf, and the, the sound of hitting the golf ball is bouncing off of a hotel, or the actual golf ball is echoing back, or the sound is echoing back. So we've got um, our images there, very vivid. So we're imagining um, echo, E for echo, F for foxtrot, that's the fox hitting the ball, uh, G for golf, and H for hotel. So now you've got those images, it will help you remember and to recall them. If you go to that room, jump to that room in your home where you've imagined these objects, people's, people and things and animal. Now we're going to move on to the next room in your house where you've placed some people, objects, not literally place them, you're imagining this in, in your mind. So you close your eyes and perhaps, and we're going to imagine that we're going from, we've gone from um, echo to hotel. The, um, the next vowel is I. So it's I for India, I, J, K, L, M, and N. What perhaps you could do, um, you need to think of a person, place or thing and like I said, some kind of interconnectivity between these things that are placed in that room. Maybe they've got something that not only associates 
them to each other, to actual memories that you have, things that are iconic to you. So India, to me, um, I associate that with the image of the Taj Mahal. And in fact, there's a very uh, famous photograph of Diana, Princess of Wales, sitting on her own on a bench in front of the Taj Mahal. So, um, and also N is for November, so maybe we can imagine it being autumn or fall, as they say in the United States, around the Taj Mahal, and you could have some leaves coming down, although that's, um, that's not necessarily the case in India. This doesn't have to be a real thing. It's a kind of an imagination. So um, we've got I for India, uh, J for, now who will be sitting on the bench? Well, I was imagine perhaps it's Juliet from the play, Romeo and Juliet. And we know it's autumn, so it's going to be N for November. Uh, so you've got I for India, J for Juliet, K is for Kilo. So um, you need to perhaps imagine some kind of Kilo weight. It could be a specific one from the gym with a Kilo on it. I don't know. Perhaps um, J Juliet. Uh, perhaps Juliet is holding a one Kilo weight or something or lifting the weight. Uh, the, the more surreal and crazy it is, uh, the easier it can be to remember. So we've got J for Juliet, K for Kilo. Um, L is for Lima. Now, a Lima is, uh, well, to me, it's uh, an unusual looking animal, uh, sort of a cross between a, a donkey and a camel or something. Uh, but, you know, you can have that in your scene. So in this room, remember, it's a room in your house you're imagining these people, places, and things that are all interlinked. Uh, so you've got K for Kilo, L for Lima. Now M is for Mike, which is um, a British boy's name, an English boy's name, Michael. Um, uh, and, but it could also be, maybe it, Mike, it, it could be someone that you know called Mike or a famous person called Mike. <coughs> But I think also the word M-I-C, uh, short for microphone, mic, so perhaps Juliet is holding a microphone as well as, as the weights. Uh, so it doesn't matter how crazy it is, as long as it's very vivid, and try to, like I said, use all your senses when you're closing your eyes, imagining this scene. So we've got I for India, an image of the Taj Mahal. Uh, J for Juliet, who's sitting on the bench in front of it. Uh, K for Kilo. L for Lima. There's this Lima in the background. Uh, M for Mike. And the leaves are coming down, although they don't in India. Uh, N for November. Use personal images of uh, people, places and things that are personal to you that you can conjure up and try and use your sense of smell and touch and everything in those when you're trying to kind of hypnotize yourself almost into using this memory technique. So now we're going to the next room. Did you know that Romeo from Romeo and Juliet, the famous play by the English playwright William Shakespeare, uh, did you know that Romeo's dad was Canadian? <laughs> well, he's not, but we're now trying to remember, we're going to go to another room, the next room in your house, it has to be a natural room, imagine it, and, we're, and remember we're imagining people, places and things, iconic people and images, to associate those things with the letters of the pilot's alphabet, the I-C-A-O. So, uh, the next letter, uh, we're following on from what we were doing, the, the, the next letter, is O, O for Oscar. Now, at the Oscars, um, at the Oscars, you can win an Oscar, an actual statue. So let's imagine that Romeo's dad won an Oscar for dancing. Crazy, but you can have your own uh, images and people. Much, but, but if you have a kind of a little story, it's interconnected and interconnected with your, the actual place. So it's going to be the kitchen 
<laughs> this, is, this is all going to be happening in the kitchen in my place. So there we are. The first thing is O for Oscar. We're imagining, and P is for Papa, and R is for Romeo. So we're Im we're imagining Romeo's dad, his Papa, is holding this statue that he's won in Hollywood for, <laughs> for for the Oscars, holding an Oscar. You know, they're gold statues, aren't they? And and they're doing a dance in the statue, the tango. So we've got O for Oscar. Uh, P for Papa, R for Romeo. Now, if you look out the window, imagine instead of what you see when you look out of your kitchen window, you can actually see the Sierra Mountains. There are some Sierra Mountains in the south of Spain, very beautiful too. Imagine you can see those. So we can see the Sierra Mountains and T, um, guess what? Romeo's father is teaching him how to do the tango. So they're tangoing up and down the kitchen so that he'll be able to impress Juliet with his tango. So let's see what we've got then. We've got O for Oscar, P for Papa. Uh, oh yeah, I left one out, didn't I? So um, Q is for Quebec. So maybe Romeo's father could have a, a Canadian flag that he's wearing, as well as holding the, the Oscar. Now do bear with me this, because if you close your minds and do this and associate all those, you, it will help you to put this into your long-term memory. So let's go again. We've got O for Oscar, P for Papa, uh, Q for Quebec, R for Romeo, um, S for Sierra, T for Tango. That's how you can remember those things. Or you could go the other way around, you know, T for Tango, R for Romeo, Q, <laughs> Q for Quebec, um, P for Papa, O for Oscar. I've missed one out there. Anyway, on to the next room. Uh, just adding to that last one, um, it is important to have these objects in a sequence in your story. So then you can play the story backwards. So for example, um, O for Oscar, that's the first thing that you see in this kind of little movie that you're making, held in Romeo's father's hand in your kitchen, would you believe, or whatever the room is that you're imagining in your house. So Oscar, um, Papa, and then the papa is wearing a Canadian flag. So Oscar Papa Quebec. And Romeo is there next to him. And next to Romeo is the window showing the Sierra Nevada mountains. And the last bit of it, we start to get some action. The father is then teaching Romeo to dance. The tango is at the end. So then not only can you say, you know, O for Oscar, P for Papa, Q for Quebec, R for Romeo, S for Sierra, T for Tango. You can actually, you know, go backwards and say, you know, just run it back. T for Tango, out the window is Sierra, S for Sierra, R for Romeo, Q for Quebec, P for Papa, O for Oscar. See? Okay, well, we're nearly there now, so let's keep on going. So we're going to our final room, and remember this is a room in your place that you can vividly imagine. This will help you to remember the pilot's alphabet. Now, the last part of the alphabet we were in was T for tango, so the next room begins with a vowel, U, and so I'm going to imagine, you know, I did some work for St. John's Ambulance. I'm going to imagine me wearing my uniform, a St. John's Ambulance, and doing this sign, V for victory. Um, uh, and so it's uh, U for uniform, V for victory. Uh, w, whiskey. I don't like whiskey, so I'm pouring a bottle of whis whiskey down the sink. I mean, actually in a, in a small bathroom. I'm pouring that down. On the wall... There is an actual picture in that room, and I know you can x-ray pictures to see if there's another picture behind. This is how some masterpieces have been discovered. 
So my actual picture, that I am imagining that it is being x-rayed. So we've got W, so X for x-ray, and behind that is a Zulu, so a Zulu warrior, a proud Zulu warrior from the Zulu nation in the south of Africa, but they're wearing a New York Yankees hat. Remember, this is the more surreal these things are, the easier it is to remember. And also, try and use images, not the images I'm giving you, but ones that are personal to you, that, that have personal memories. So we've got X for X-ray, Y for Yankee, Z for Zulu. And notice I am trying to do them in a sequence. I'm looking at them in a sequence or I'm playing them in a sequence of time in a kind of a little pastiche there so I can run them backwards. So this really means that you, 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 um, you've remembered them very well. So for example, I can now say Z for Zulu, Y for Yankee, X for X-ray, W for whiskey, pouring it down the sink, uh, V for Victor and U for uniform. So we've done the whole thing now. So let's see if I can do the alphabet from start to finish and in reverse. Okay, so in theory, all I have to do is run around my house and my brain in order to remember the ICAO International Civil Aviation Authorities alphabet, the pilot's alphabet that will help you to be understood much more easily if you have a difficult word to pronounce. So let's give it a go anyway. So A is for Alpha, B is for Bravo, C is for Charlie. I'm, I'm imagining Charlie Chaplin at the moment. Um, D is for Delta, the Delta Airlines aeroplane. Um, e is for Echo, and F is for Foxtrot. Remember, there's a, a fox playing golf. Uh, G is for Golf, and H is Hotel. The golf ball of the sound is bouncing off the side of the hotel. Now we're going to jump to the next room. Um, I is for India. Um, J is for Juliet, who's sitting on the bench in front of the Taj Mahal. J, K is for Kilo, L for Lima, uh, and it's for November, it's autumn or fall and the leaves are falling. Now, um, now we're gonna go, in my mind, it's the kitchen, so it uh, can be whatever it is, the technic, uh, room that you're using and the objects, the person, places or things. So we've got O for Oscar, P for Papa, Q for Quebec, the little Canadian sign, uh, R for Romeo, S for Sierra, and T for Tango. And then in the final room, it's uh, U for Uniform, V for Victor, W for Whiskey going down the sink, um, A, X for X-Ray, and Y for Yankee, and Z for Zulu. So I've remembered it. And I need to top this up and, you know, uh, remind myself of it and it's easy to do that because whenever you come across a, a word in a newspaper or something like that just pa practice and run it through your uh, this scenario these scenarios that you have that will help you remember and recall them the big test can I say it backwards can I say the pilot's alphabet backwards that will really mean that I'm starting to um, to store it in my longer term memory so we're going to have to start with going to that room. This is where it's important. You're going to go to the rooms in reverse. So the final room, uh, um, remember, Z for Zulu and Y for Yankee. Y for Yankee, X for X-ray, W for Whiskey, V for Victor and U for Uniform. Then... Back to the other room, T for Tango, S for Sierra, uh, R for Romeo, Q for Quebec, P for Papa, O for Oscar, then going back again, uh, N for November. I'm struggling a little bit here, but obviously we're in the Taj Mahal kind of uh, situation. N for, for November. Um, L for Lima, L, M, 
Uh, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, there's a microphone. So M for microphone, L for Lima, uh, J for Juliet, and then we can go back to E for Echo, and the original one that we've we, that we got for um, for the first few letters of the alphabet, which is E for Echo, D for D for Delta, C for Charlie, B for Bravo, A for Alpha, almost. So you understand the technique a little bit better. The room that I was struggling, the sequence, the reverse sequence with, was where I hadn't really made the little story um, in sequence properly. So really, I should have said, okay, well, there's the Taj Mahal, there's India, and there is Juliet on a bench. But maybe said there's a kilo on top of a lima kilo weight on top of a lima and that there's some microphones above that coming down from the leaves so then we've got a bit more of a seek uh, an actual sequence so then we could uh, if you're saying in in reverse uh, what i'm finding is that i need to practice this but in particular which sets of letters are in each room so I can jump to a room quite quickly to kind of work something out until it hopefully it will become automatic like people uh, in the way that people that use this alphabet all day long uh, will use so um, you know the first room was A for Alpha and then the stairs were E for Echo onwards um, and then it was I for India and uh, in the front room and O for Oscar in the kitchen and U for uniform in the bathroom. So in reverse, I suppose it'd be U for uniform, O for Oscar, I for India, E for Echo, A for Alpha. So you need to be able to move into those sequences uh, or jump to them, I should say, quite quickly. And then maybe if you're very familiar with saying them forwards and backwards, those sequences within those sections, it's almost like a random access. I actually missed the whole room when I was doing it in reverse. So it's very important uh, to make sure you're walking around the house and walk around the house in reverse. And also to be familiar with the start and end letter of each set of objects. So make sure there is a sequence. So it's A to D, E to H, I to N, O to T, U to Z, and of course in reverse, Z to U, T to O, N to I, H to E, and D to A. It also be very helpful when you're uh, revising and practicing these uh, sequences to help remember the alphabet. Also, please do subscribe, click on the notification bells to get the latest videos. I'm trying to produce more videos this year after a slow start and that would also help me get the numbers up to get the, uh, the word out to other people about how to improve your British pronunciation. Uh, I've also put some outtakes, more outtakes on the end uh, for me to squirm to and see you next time. Thanks. And there is Charlie Chaplin with a letter A on him. So, um, and he's, you know, a representative of someone who's not, is he? You should. I was just looking at a car out there. I should you should?